Hey guys, here we go into a video on why Mike Tyson says that only smart people get into boxing. Now, uh, boxing is very, very difficult. There's a lot going on, a lot of information, um, and it's important to always be making adjustments. And uh, we're going to talk about one of the adjustments that uh, Jorge Linares made in this fight to be able to knock down Lomachenko uh, and catch him in kind of his own timing and his own rhythm. Um, even though, you know, just five seconds before that knockdown, uh, one of the announcers was talking about how Lomachenko makes people fight at his rhythm and he can feel it. Um, so it's a really fascinating idea. Uh, but real quick, I want to talk about a Patreon update. Um, there are lots of patrons. There's a lot going on, a lot to talk about. Um, and currently... Uh, at the start of June, I'm going to be changing the structure. It's going to be $20 to join and $20 a month. Um, there's you know dozens and dozens of videos discussing how to train the line, discussing how to um, generate power or gain power, um, as well as different ways to kind of condition your body as well. Um, the best ways to jump rope, uh, what you want to be focusing on. Uh, we're starting to get into the double end bag right now, so if you're curious, um, uh, my next patron video is actually going to be uh, talking about the ways to use the double end bag uh, to generate a line and to work a line, just like Lomachenko is doing here, uh, to get comfortable making these kinds of motions, uh, slipping on the front foot, slipping on the back foot. Um, and what we're going to be talking about um, are ways that you split your line uh, using the double end bag with that um, with that drill. Uh, but before we get into this, actually, as we get into this film study, um, what we're going to be talking about. Uh, this is Lomachenko's line here. When he's on the back foot here or the front foot here, the span of this range of motion is going to be his line, and then the placement of his head on that line is going to be uh, where his line is, right? That's going to be on the line. That's where he is on the line. Um, and what happens in the Lomachenko fight is Lomachenko uses these kinds of motions to uh, threaten Jorge Linares' position. So as Jorge Linares is on the line here and Lomachenko crosses that line, he's threatening him with a straight left hand, saying, hey, I'm going to cross your line and attack you with this shot. And then when he gets to the front foot here, he can come back and cross with a cross as well, with a right cross or a jab. A lot of people call it a jab. It's actually a cross. Um, but those are the kinds of ideas that we're going to be talking about during the course of this film study. Um, and the ways that he uses that line here, right? Fainting here, and then crossing that line here to throw that shot here, right? And then the cross right here, just exactly what I'm talking about, one side of the line or the other, right? Using those motions, right? To faint, to probe, to create openings, um, and then changing the speed and tempo which you use those motions to actually attack your opponent. Um, so, at the beginning of this fight, Linares liked to be on the front foot. He was doing a decent job of getting there. But after he would make his attacks, oftentimes he would get stuck here. And Lomachenko would look to attack him. And this would cause him to, this would cause to alienate him from that position. Uh, and as these attacks accumulated, right? So Linares going to the front foot here. As you see, he leans to the front foot at the beginning of the clip and Lomachenko attacks him. He moves to the back foot. And then as he moves back to the front foot, Lomachenko attacks him again. Um, and I want to point out that the use of the straight left hand while Linares is on the front foot. Uh, this is a very, very important idea. Now moving on, Linares again getting on that front foot and then inciting Lomachenko to attack him and then getting around what would have been a left hand right here. Notice immediately after this controlling jab comes, Linares ducks what would be a straight left hand. Um, but Lomachenko doesn't actually throw it. This is also a very important idea uh, because Linares is already expecting the straight left hand after this jab and after this cross or after this crossing of the line. So Linares needs to get off the line in order to prevent it from hitting him uh, when the left hand comes. Essentially meaning that Linares is going to be giving away that position for free. Uh, because he doesn't want to be getting hit by that straight left hand. So Lomachenko will have to throw that left hand fewer and fewer times to cross the line. So as you see here, because Linares is getting onto the back foot now, this, this clip being so strikingly different from this one here, right? As Linares goes from the back foot to the front foot and eats a jab and then back foot to the front foot. And then Linares making an adjustment here, trying to fight Lomachenko without being on the front foot because Lomachenko is doing a great job of isolating Linares from that shot and pushing him to the back foot. 
As you can see here, Lomachenko having a hard time landing that straight left hand because Linares is using the back half of his line to get away from Lomachenko. Now, as Lomachenko continues to come forward and not use that straight left hand, Linares is finding other ways to use his line to attack Lomachenko. Because he doesn't want to get to the front foot, because he doesn't want to get hit with all those counters, those straight left hands, he's using attacks that will occupy the back half of his line. So throwing left hooks instead, uh, trying to attack Lomachenko. Now, again, not wanting to commit to moving to the front foot, Linares has no choice but to move all the way to the back foot and allow Lomachenko to kind of land these free shots because of the, the fear that he has of getting on the front foot and eating those shots himself. Now, the sixth round sparked kind of a change in Linares as he began to realize that Lomachenko wasn't using his left hand to control the space anymore, so he was able to get to the front foot here. This is one of the first punches that he, he throws to kind of figure that out, reoccupying the front foot um, after Lomachenko uses the lead hand, right? Uses the lead hand here to try and split his line, right? So what Lomachenko is looking to do is use this lead hand, right? To force Le uh, Linares to the back foot. And when it stops working here, Linares realizes that Lomachenko isn't actually throwing his straight left hand. So again, Lomachenko coming forward, probing with this shot, and then fainting, right? And this is the timing that Lomachenko, or that Linares, is expecting the straight left hand to come. As you see, pro, and then Linares expects the straight left hand and ducks what would be the straight left hand here. But Lomachenko is simply probing to see how Linares is going to react to this timing again as he takes that lead foot dominance and then he pivots his weight to the back foot. This pivot also is going to get him away from what would have been a possible left hook from Linares um, during the course of this action, right? As Linares had shown um, in this previous clip. Not that one. Uh, this one here to look to use the left hand. Right? So Lomachenko here leaning forward makes an adjustment to start leaning backward as he tests that space, looking to see if he's able to take that lead foot dominance and circle around the outside of Linares. Um, now, what winds up happening is Lomachenko looks to use this lead hand to split Linares' guard and force him to the back foot sim uh, very... Um, very close to what he did in the last clip. Um, but instead, Linares decides to, instead of bringing his weight from the front foot to the back foot and pivoting to the back foot, he decides to carry his weight forward into Lomachenko. Now just look at these clips. They're very, very, very similar in content, right? Lomachenko is probing and then shuffling forward, taking a step to the outside of Linares, but he's keeping his head on the back foot testing Linares to see if Linares is going to attack that position. Linares says no, and Lomachenko feels like it's safe to do again, and Linares makes an adjustment, and instead of going to the back foot through the left hook, he goes forward through the right hand, a motion that he hadn't really been comfortable making um, in, in what felt like several rounds. Um, but um, let's take a look at it at another angle. As you see Lomachenko shooting that jab, expecting this moment to signify... The moment that Linares would carry his weight from the front foot to the back foot through a left hook, but instead he goes here with the straight right hand instead and is able to drop Lomachenko. Um, a beautiful adjustment from him uh, and fantastic boxing uh, in spite of the fact that uh, part of this is actually because of the fact that Lomachenko, I believe he hurt his shoulder in this fight, uh, his left shoulder I believe it was, um, and that may be the reason why he was no longer occupying that space uh, from Linares and allowed Linares to occupy that space when he looked to shuffle forward um, and attack him with the straight right hand. Now, um, again, this is Linares showing that he can utilize his line in two different ways, right? Getting attacked here and splitting to the front and then getting attacked here and splitting to the back, right? This is gonna be a very, very important idea um, for our patrons and people looking to get better um, as we move into using and learning about the double end bag um, 
um, on my Patreon channel. So again, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I'm going to be doing many, many more film studies like this um, on individual tactics or individual punches that have dropped great fighters. Um, I will be doing Floyd Mayweather next. Um, his punch against a... His punch against... Um, What's that guy's name? Marcos Maitana. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, um, check out my Patreon. Again, those changes are coming June 1st. Anybody who's been rocking with me before is going to get the $10 entry. Um, everything else is going to be $20 to sign up and then $20 a month. Um, and um, lots and lots of videos. You'll have access to the full archive, the entire span of it being open. Um, so come check it out. And um, yeah, again... Uh, personalized training videos for the those of you that are interested. Um, you send me in your training videos, your shadow boxing, your heavy bag work, your double in bag work, um, any of those, and I'll teach you ways to improve upon your technique, uh, improve your line, find ways to better transition your weight, um, and better ways to line up your attacks. Um, we have uh, fighters from uh, who are sending in you know shadow boxing to double in bag work to heavy bag work to sparring. Um, so if you want to see some some sparring, you know, other people working, drilling, um, and learning, it's a really, really interesting and fun community um, that I really, really hope to grow um, and help you guys all learn from each other to learn about the sport of boxing. Um, that's what really what it's going to wind up being is kind of a community of people um, that want to help and have a passion for boxing. So anyway, let me know what you guys like, uh, think in the comments below. And um, any of my patrons, again, I really appreciate your guys' support. I really appreciate you guys um, um, saying such nice things in the comments, especially the comments of the YouTube videos for the people who uh, don't really have a, a, a concept of what's going on in my Patreon um, because, you know, it is kind of a little bit different. But um, anyway, um, yeah, thanks, guys.